नमस्ते विज्ञान प्रविधि कार्यक्रम में यहाँ हार्दिक स्वागत तथा अभिवादन नेपाल विज्ञान तथा प्रविधि प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठान नाश द्वारा संचालन करने यो कार्यक्रम हर एक साता को शनिवार साँझ इस बेला प्रसारण कर रो कार्यक्रम यहाँ सोमवार बिहान साढ़े एगार बजे पुनः हेन सकूँ यहाँ ठाई यो विज्ञान प्रविधि कार्यक्रम में हमी विज्ञान प्रविधि का विभिन्न विधा का सामग्री प्रसारण करने तब लग आज को सामग्री के इंडियन नेशनल साइंस एकेडमी इंसा का प्रेसिडेंट प्राध्यापक डॉक्टर किशन लाल के दिन अगाड़ी नेपाल एकेडमी अफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी नाच भवन खुमलटार भ्रमण को लगी आने उक्त अवसर में नाच का वैज्ञानिक डॉक्टर सुरेश कुमार ढुंगे वहांसंग एटा कुरा आज हमी विज्ञान प्रविधि कार्यक्रम को सामग्री को रूप में उक्त कुरा लिख Professor uh, Krishnan Lal, you are welcome in our program. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, coming to Nepal and trying to, uh, you know, encourage the Nepalese scientists and researchers uh, in various way, ways. And you have been in such an important position. Uh, you have headed the National Physical Laboratory of India. And presently, you are in a very prestigious position of uh, president of uh, Indian National Academy of Sciences. So, you are welcome to our program once again. And I'd like to begin with uh, your uh, view on your expertise. What's your primary area of expertise as a uh, professor of physics? But first of all, I must say how glad I am to be here. And I would like to say through this my namaste to all Nepalese listeners and viewers and also my Abhinandan. I am very glad to be here and uh, I appreciate our interaction with my colleagues in Nepal. Now coming to the area of my research interest, I am primarily a solid state physicist but got into more investigation of structure of crystals, real structure means the structure and defects in crystals, relate them to with properties, devices and with influence of external fields and radiation. So this is broad my and in between because India we have gone through the growth phase so we had limited money so we decided to develop most of the sophisticated facilities within our laboratory and whole my life I have been building equipment, developing techniques. So I have a one component where I do this. Some 20 years ago I got involved with the international body core data on data science and technology and they initially two, three times invited me then I got more interested and later I became president of the international body which is a ICSU body. So data science and technology is also my passion and of course as president of Indian National Science Academy. So promotion of science, recognition of excellence and also promoting ethical values is something very close to my heart. Okay. So it's very clear that you are basically from the experimental physics yes. side. And there is so much of dilemma going on, sometimes confusion also in you know, Nepalese physicist. And what should be our, uh, you know, area of uh, research for future? Whether we should focus on theoretical physics or experimental physics in our country context. So what would be your suggestion in this? See, I, uh, as a, per my personal opinion is this is too simplistic to divide uh, between the two. Uh, pure uh, theoretical or experimental. Most of the experimental work and the which we consider very important results in experiment we could get only because we had also quite uh, reasonably good theoretical background. Say in for example whether a, a mechanism of growth of a crystal or what is the source. So we have to have a, a theoretical background. 
and you must be very good in experiment. Theoreticians must be very clear about what is the factual position. Yes. And then based on that they build theories and models. And so it is a complementarity. One should keep in mind both the sides. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Of course, today experimental science needs more money. So sometimes it is quite obvious. We also have a very large community of theoretical scientists in India. And I, uh, I don't see a conflict. But I do see one thing I believe in. Any country which wants to develop, it must develop experimental sciences. I'm not saying physics, experimental sciences. You can't develop without experimental science. Okay. Without soiling your hand, you cannot make progress. Uh, yes, uh, that's absolutely correct. And uh, now, uh, well, having worked as a professor of physics, experimental professor of physics, uh, you, you switched in a way, like you are in administrative position also, president and director. Uh, it's a quite personal question. Where do you, did you enjoy uh, the most? Being a full-time dedicated professor in the lab or uh, being the head of the institutions like uh, NPL uh, and uh, INSA. INSA is different. It's not a. It's the. It's the prestige and also bringing the top uh, people in India. But as far as the laboratory is concerned, being a scientist or being a director, uh, the difference is the director is the enabling factor. If you don't, you may be great scientist, but if the laboratory ambience is not good, if the, then you, you also cannot perform. So I, first phase, I was very lucky. I, we had a mentor, a very great director, a great scientist, world authority, everything good. And he created ambience, we could work uh, whatever we liked. And uh, then when the question came, there was a perturbation in the laboratory. Initially, I was not into the directorship, but then I took up the directorship and I showed I can also turn around the system and you, one can see a phase transition performance. But it was at cost of my work, this is true. At that time, you can see also the decline number of papers, PhDs, but I do it honestly. If I do a job, I try my best to be honest to that job. If you have taken the responsibility, make it a success. But at that time, we also flourished in every way. Even uh, at that time, we had four time hosted the Prime Minister of India, which never happened afterward, or even before in one uh, such a short, or two times President of India, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, but because he is a scientist and so on. But if you ask me my free will, my best place where I get a spiritual pleasure is my lab. That is doing the experiment is something which gives me pleasure. In fact, after my term as director was coming to end, I was already two years more than normal, 62. The, I was asked whether uh, they wanted me to take one more administrative position as chairman of a research board or giving me two year extension and as a scientist in director level. So I prefer to be scientist. I, I could have had three years as a chairman of a board with higher uh, emolument. And they asked me, I said, my choice is to go to lab for two years. Because I was missing uh, during my directorship, I was not able to spend time. That's uh, I hope you got that yeah. answer. That's a true spirit of scientist. Uh -huh. And because of this dedication and commitment and uh, their love, affection yes. towards their uh, own work, yes. uh, that makes scientists different than the ordinary man. True. Uh, yes. And while doing science, there comes a quite, uh, you know, frequently a uh, question to the scientists uh, from the government agencies, uh, the uh, planners, uh, that do science which can give uh, immediate benefit to the people. So, as a scientist, what do you think? Is it possible if you invest money now for science, if you invest time and energy for science now, is it possible that uh, a scientist can give immediate benefit to the people or there is a, a link, there is a chain of the processes after which we can deliver. 
See, you, one has to understand the total. I, in this uh, morning, I gave a talk here. I told you one model was that science, if you do very well, will lead to technology and that will lead to production and then you will attain prosperity. Everybody would like to do it fast. Yes. But there is a lot of detail between science to technology and technology to production. Scientists can help, but scientists alone cannot bridge all the gaps. There is a whole other system must come into it. So I had also the pleasure, privilege of working with IBM Watson Center. Many times I compare between US and India systems that how anything developed at the bench level, for example, at NPL or at IBM, we are both where I was involved in this thing. To take it to the production level, the intermediate systems, they have far more stronger. That is the main difference between a developing country and a developed country. Most people don't talk about it. The gap between the laboratory and production, that gap is well covered in an industrialized society. It is very little covered in our type of societies yet, including India. So we have to focus there because in a developed country, it is not merely the government has to do it because industry is there, the overall infrastructure, ambience, uh, players are many. Yes. They have this uh, uh, wherewithal to bridge the gap. Now this emerging Asian countries like Taiwan, Korea and others, they are also trying to do that, that whatever comes from laboratory, then it goes immediately into, uh, into nearly the production stage. So this we must master, our countries. This is my one experience of my, my uh, understanding of the whole thing. With your long experience, yes. uh, what do you think, doing science in 21st century, especially research on science and technology, do we need to scale up the uh, level of our investment uh, the monetary question for it uh, to develop the infrastructure and the capacity uh, or not? No, no substantially. I, I would say substantially and also both quantity and quality. We must have more number of people doing high quality work and adequately supported. Adequately supported. By it today, the support level can be very clever because many things are electronically available. You don't have to have physically purchasing all the journals. You can do much better way by collective accession of uh, the literature or other wherewithal. So there is many clever ways where you can minimize, but there is no substitute for laboratories. And my appeal would be we should persuade, we should do every effort to develop things by ourselves. We, we have to remember, it is like I sometimes call Hanuman syndrome, we have to tell people how good you are. How could a few, several hundred years ago, the temples I saw or the sculptures you see or the metal objects, they were not trained by anybody from outside. Yes. This knowledge came from this mind and the hands of Nepal. Yes. You should not forget about this. This is in Hanuman syndrome, you have to be reminded how great you are. Don't be diffident. Come, soil your hands, practice, make mistakes and pro progress further. Till you start making things, there you will always be in a very inferiority complex situation. Because I build and I could then attract people, both stocks coming from Germany, from Russia, even a student coming from US to make an experiment because confessing we don't have this facility. You can do it. You can do it and this confidence must be instilled in our young fellows. They should work day, night and say that I will come there. Why not? It's a fantastic idea. So, uh, I mean, we should never forget our potential and remember our past. Yes, you, you look at your genetic development. Why are you diffident? Why? Feel, rise up. Yeah, that's As in Gita, Kaunte, Yuddhaya, Kratnishche. So when we talk about the government, it always comes like uh, visionary leadership in the politics in the government. Uh, that makes a difference in the development of 
science and technology, along with the development of the nation as a whole. So, uh, when we talk about India again, we talk uh, very much about the visionary leader like uh, Pandit uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, who in VCS and uh, you know established a lot of institutions, and those institutions are actually now in the full phase of its development, and that brought India far ahead in in terms of uh, the strength built by science and technology. So, I mean, you have closely worked with the politicians, also being the president and director. So, what do you think could will be the role of uh, a leader, the political leader, uh, for the development of science and technology in the country, especially like ours? See, the it is I sometimes joke political level or political leadership has a multiplier role. You may be fantastic uh, scientist, and if the support from political level is negative, then you can't uh, do much. It's a multiplier. You can multiply by 100, you can multiply by zero. So that is one thing. India, we were very fortunate, our founding fathers, all of them. Because one thing was that we took a pledge, I mean, my, our political leadership took a pledge. We follow science and technology as a route for development. So that is why first came a science policy in 50s. Then they said now, because we were getting denial of technology from outside, we, that forced us to do things by ourselves. And one of these uh, visible aspect is, say, space. When people don't give you, you start doing it. And you succeed. That is what I was saying, the Anuman syndrome for Nepal also. Soil your hands. So then they came science technology policy. Now they feel that this itself is not sufficient. Technology should go to the marketplace. So innovation came into science, technology, innovation early this year. So that is reflects the commitment of the political level. At least they are not against us. They support. Sometimes we are unhappy. We want more support. We want support comparable as a percentage of GDP. We would like like if not uh, like us at least like korea or uh, uh, taiwan and things like that but it we have also to see the priority because we have whole society has to grow so this is the balance but we prime minister has committed two percent doubling in last next five years the government this commitment if they have also a vision a roadmap and expectations we have also to deliver it's both ways and uh, one very interesting thing that we have noticed in Nepal over the past few years, that is the trend of studying physics yes. in the master's level, that has uh, appreciably increased. The, the involvement I'm glad, in I'm glad. Uh, physics is very high. Mm, but at the same time, we have to understand, realize that this has come not only as a passion for physics, rather there is a good chance of you know going abroad for phd and further studies okay that has you know appealed the people to join physics master's degree course so to those youngsters who are uh, attracted towards physics due to multiple reasons do you have specific suggestions to them see one thing in all this pursuit in research is that you should have been you should have a you should derive pleasure out of it to me, it is final, this thing is it's more or less a spiritual uh, pleasure. You leave other day-to-day -day things or going out or enjoying somewhere or movies or all. You forget about this because this, you get pleasure there. You must enjoy it. It's not a force. You must enjoy it. Then day, night, uh, it doesn't matter to you. The driving force should come from, come from inside. Yes, inside. And only, I believe, in India also there was a problem. Even now there is some problem. We have a finite number of people who come for jobs, and they are not the best people. But there are others who they come for love of subject. We have many people, I have, can cite names even, who got selected into top services. But in the heart of heart they were physics people. They left it, resigned and came back. Not once, quite a few. So it is not, I mean, I mean, for example, I can name many people, D.S. Kothari and so on, 
From that university, anybody who talked would go to into ICS or IES and so on, and would be there. I mean, but no, the physics was their passion, and they became icons for others. Physics is, is a science is a passion. I'm not saying physics, I mean, anything which attracts you, even botany, even you go, if you want to be a great in uh, museology, I, I don't mind that. Have a passion and excel. Go to the top. That is the main thing. So one philosophic question to you, uh, having lived uh, several decades so far uh, as a physicist, in the eye of a physicist, uh, uh, what do you think uh, the human life is? It's very difficult to answer as a scientist. I can more answer on a philosophical life. But as a physicist, there are many riddles. Riddles is that, you see, when we take brain part of our body, we brain is more a material. Uh, it, to me, it's like a material. I can define in terms of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, their uh, structure. I can define many ways. But how it gets connected with the thought and our feelings, this is still very difficult to explain. For example, I can demonstrate by an experiment here, uh, if you allow me. Uh, sure. Uh, direct experiment. May I request you to stand up for a moment? Are you sure. And now you kindly sit down. What is your weight? Maybe 60, 70 kg or 80 plus. 80 plus. Yes. I have not spent more than a milliwatt of energy in my request to you. I could lift one 80 kg by at least half a meter. How much uh, energy in Newtons it is needed? This does not, physics cannot explain it. There is no uh, causality in this thing. It is our relationship. My, you are very kind. I made you a request. You could also I'll say why I am quite Spiritual okay. Power. This is our link, human to human. This is still a mystery. We don't know it. How thought comes, even thought, I can immediately now our this uh, Indian uh, this uh, spacecraft going to Mars. The moment that we think, we are immediately our mind is there. It is fa is this philosophy? It's obviously faster than velocity of light. We can think of any part of our galaxy in no time. Yes. The thought, uh, this uh, thought by itself, is not physical. It is not a. It doesn't have a mass. It doesn't, so these are the riddles one has to think and solve. And also a lot of work is being done on this. So that's a mystery. That that's a mystery, mystery, mystery is till we understand. Yes. Mystery is till we, you ask a yogi when he understands, then there is no mystery. Yes. The, he becomes Buddha, why he became Buddha? Because he became the knowledgeable. Yes. Siddharth became Buddha because when he became knowledge comes, then it is not a mystery. That is the, even in science, I mean, X-rays. Yes. In fact, when uh, Lawe discovered diffraction of X-rays, they went to Rongen, who gave this X-ray. Some many times in Germany, it was called Rongen rays. But he was a little bit disappointed. He didn't want, he wanted X-rays to remain X-rays. Because the mystery should remain. But after this, uh, it became clear, this is nothing but electromagnetic waves. So mystery goes up. Science has taught, learn, go, practice, in, and investigate, analyze, try to find. It may take time, but it will, uh, we can tackle it. I hope so. Thank you, sir. We have covered many areas in a short uh, talk. We have covered many areas. And uh, before I end our conversation, uh, if uh, you think I have missed out anything to ask you, or you want to say something to our larger audience of Nepal, so please uh, say a few words. Thank you. It was very nice uh, speaking to you. Only I thought one of the things which is quite important nowadays also in science as in research is the question of values and integrity. We should uh, pay more attention on character building and ethical value standards. We had uh, this in our region. That is why everybody respects for our spiritual and uh, 
you know, knowledge base uh, of uh, this region. But I think we should uh, lay as much emphasis as possible in our education and research systems on moral value based education uh, systems. Moral values and high ethical standards. And also then it will leave out this um, petty issues of plagiarism and all that. This is an international issue. So we should also be very concerned. To us it should come naturally. To us it could and I will appeal and I also see a very bright future for Nepal and of course we have very close collaboration. Some more aspects we had discussed with Professor Kafile and uh, in future I see very close working together between Nepal and India and I want to have more exchange of people, continuous exchange of scientists among laboratories, universities and elsewhere. Thank you Professor for your humble words and uh, for accepting our invitation to come in our uh, talk. Thank, Thank you, you very much and my best wishes Namaste. to all of you. Namaste. इंसाका प्रेसिडेंट प्राध्यापक डाक्टर किशनलाल सँगको यो कुराकानी सहित आजलाई विज्ञान प्रविधि कार्यक्रम यति नै यहाँहरुलाई यो कार्यक्रम कस्तो लाग्छ आफ्ना सुझावहरु हामीलाई पठाउनु होला हामीसँग पत्राचार गर्ने ठेगाना हो विज्ञान प्रविधि टेलिभिजन कार्यक्रम नेपाल विज्ञान तथा प्रविधि प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठान नास्ट पोस्ट बक्स नम्बर 3323 काठमाडौं नेपाल र हाम्रो इमेल एड्रेस हो विज्ञानप्रविधि@nast.org.np हस्ता आज लाइक कार्यक्रम में तीन आगमिशाता फिर भेटोंगा नमस्ते